Take a look at this map. So the highlighted areas that you see here are the counties in the US that at the time of this study had the lowest percentage of their male population with kidney cancer. Okay, so among all the counties in the US, these were the lowest 10%. Now, the interesting thing about these counties is that they're mainly traditional Republican counties in rural areas with low populations. So why do you think that they had lower cancer rates than the rest of the country? We'll come back to that a bit later. The other day, I was watching a video from another trading YouTube channel, and I never usually watch trading channels unless I'm feeling particularly masochistic, but for whatever reason, this particular video caught my attention. The guy was explaining an easy way to improve your trading system, and what they recommended you do is get a sheet of paper and track 10 of your trades, and once you have 10 trades, you review how you performed. Were you profitable or not? Did you follow the system? And so on. And if the answer is no, if you didn't perform very well, you then make adjustments to how you're trading, then get a new sheet of paper and do the same thing again. Track 10 trades, assess how your performance has changed, and the aim is to have better results on the next 10 trades. And then you make adjustments and continue and so on and so on. And the idea is that you eventually get to the point where you execute 10 great trades. And the comments on this video were full of people praising the idea, thanking them for this practical approach to improving their trading. But hopefully you can already see why this activity is at best a waste of time and more likely actually damaging to your trading. This approach falls for something known as the law of small numbers. This is a phenomenon that was identified by Kahneman and Tversky in the 1970s, where people have an incorrect belief that small sample sizes are likely to be representative of the overall expected value. Basically a play on the famous law of large numbers, which states that the larger the sample size, the closer the finding will be to the overall expected value. But the problem with small sample sizes is that there can be a huge amount of variability. A small random change can have a big effect on the analysis of the data and lead to the wrong conclusions. So if we go back to the map from the start of the video showing kidney cancer rates, most people would answer that the low rates in those counties are because of the cleaner lifestyle in rural areas or because they're Republican counties or a bunch of other reasons. But the fact is they have low rates because they have a low population. You see, if a county has a population of 100 people and one of them gets cancer, they go from having a 0% rate to a 1% rate. Likewise, if they have one person with cancer and then they no longer have a person with cancer, they can go from 1% to 0%. But if they're at 1% and another person gets cancer, their rate doubles. Now compare this to a county with 10,000 people. If one person gets cancer, the rate doesn't increase that substantially. And if you don't believe me about all of this, here's a chart of the counties with the highest rate of kidney cancer. Once again, it's counties with a low population in rural areas. Now, all of this was taken from an article by Weiner and Zerling in 2006, explaining this common error that people tend to make when looking at data, the law of small numbers. So with that in mind, let's think about how this relates to the activity of tracking 10 trades and then reviewing your performance. So you might be delighted if you end up with anything above a 50% success rate, but the difference between hitting a 60% or a 40% success rate in 10 trades is just two trades. Now, even with a very high success rate, that's a likely occurrence to have that sort of variability between one set of 10 trades and another. It isn't going to tell us anything about the overall success of the system being used. Yet in one case, you'd be happy with the results and in the other, you'd be making adjustments to your system. Now, you might be wondering how any trader could be crazy enough to base their trading approach on such small sample sizes. But the reality is, many traders are doing something similar without even realizing it. You may even be falling into this trap yourself, the trap of the law of small numbers. Like for example, when you're on a profitable streak, you might feel more confident that you're doing things correctly. Whereas when you're on a losing streak, you might start wondering what you're doing wrong. You might start looking at your performance after a losing month and feel like it was an absolute disaster despite only taking a handful of trades. These are small sample sizes. Therefore, we can expect there to be variation. They don't necessarily reflect the longer term performance of our trading and therefore they shouldn't influence the way we trade or the way we think. But the area that I really want us to focus on is testing. In my last video, I explained how important it is to estimate probabilities when assessing opportunities in the markets for many reasons. 
And by the way, if you want to know more about the things that I think you need to succeed at trading, check out the free training that's linked down below in the description box. I'll walk you through the things that I've picked up from over 20 years of being involved in the markets, including things that you don't tend to hear about anywhere else. But anyway, in that last video, I pointed out that when most traders collect data on their trading or do testing and things like that, they'll make decisions based on just a few dozen trades and think that that is a big sample size. So this then led to the question, well, how much data is enough? What sample size do you need? And this is where most advice leads traders down the wrong path. You'll see different answers online from different people. Some people say you need to backtest 30 trades, some 50, maybe some people even say over 100, but they're just plucking numbers out of thin air rather than basing it on something meaningful. Instead, there are formulas that you can use to calculate an appropriate sample size. Like for example, one of the most common ones is known as Cochrane's sample size formula. And you can see it on screen here. But don't worry if it looks a bit confusing, you don't necessarily need to figure it out for yourself. You can either use an online calculator that does it for you, or I'll give you a simple answer in just a moment. But with these sample size formulas, one of the key things that you'll notice is that they calculate it based on a desired level of precision. In other words, what confidence level do you want to have in the results and what margin of error will you allow for? In general, a good level that's frequently used for statistical studies is a 5% margin of error and a 95% confidence level. So based on those parameters, the formula tells us that we will need a sample size of 385. So for example, if you're looking at the success rate of a particular setup, you need to track that setup 385 times to have a 95% confidence level and 5% margin of error with your results. Now that's quite a lot more than what most traders will tell you. And in fact, it could be even more. Like if you want the 99% confidence level, you're looking at a sample size of 664. So this is why I always say that it's best to use a trading simulator to collect this sort of data because it's a much more practical solution rather than doing it in the live markets. The data in the simulator is exactly the same as the real market data, but it's just more convenient to collect that data quickly. And if you want to use my recommended simulator, which is Forex Tester, there's a link in the description and you can use our code to get an additional 10% off. But look, I know 385 does sound like a lot. So I do have a bit of a caveat to add here. It does also depend on what you're testing and how precise you need it to be. In an ideal world, of course, we'd all have the right sample size on everything we're testing. So if you're estimating probabilities, you'd have a sample size of at least 385 before you start the calibration process to improve your accuracy. If you're testing your system, you'll have at least 385 trades before you assess your performance. If you're testing a particular aspect of your trading, like a tool or an indicator, you get the idea. But you know, sometimes that might not actually be necessary. So in an upcoming video, I'll explain when you can rely on smaller sample sizes and how to collect your data in a way that's more accurate. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that one. But for now, there are three things that I want you to take away from this video. The first thing is to not look at trading in isolation. A lot of people make this mistake of thinking trading is somehow completely unique to anything else and therefore they can't take lessons from other fields. Instead, I look to other fields for insights and the correct ways of doing things. If you're testing something, look at statistics, probability theory, or the scientific method. Don't rely on useless received wisdom or opinions from traders online. Instead, look for facts. The second is to stop cutting corners with your data collection. Once again, don't listen to all the bad trading advice that's around online and end up making judgments based on small sample sizes. Instead, invest time and effort into collecting data properly. If you're taking trading seriously, make sure your actions match your ambitions. You know, people teaching you to trade online are incentivized to make you think that things are quick and simple because then it makes it seem like what they're offering is an easy way to success. But if you want to do this correctly, spend time collecting the right amount of data. And the third thing is to stop falling for the law of small numbers in your trading performance. Whether it's losing streaks, profitable streaks, individual trades, bag testing, or how likely you think something is to happen, don't let the variability of a small sample size inappropriately influence your thinking. 